Tsunamis may be the most dramatic example of what a rising wall of water can do. But there's another way in which water on the rise can have an impact. One that occurs much more slowly, but that ultimately may be far more significant than an isolated tsunami event. Today, we do know that sea level is rising. It's rising on the order of 1.8 to 2 millimeters per year. That is a higher rate of rise than has been experienced over the last century or two. Um, there are projections based on model, computer models of global warming in the future that sea level will not only continue to rise, but that it will accelerate its rate of rise, and that we have actually um, put enough heat into the oceans and into the atmosphere that we're currently committed to a uh, sea level rise on the order of several centuries. While a rise in sea level of two millimeters annually may not sound especially worrisome, if such a trend continues, the results could eventually be quite serious. The effect of rising sea level or changing sea level on a shoreline would be and the first order to either flood or withdraw from the shoreline. Um, it's interesting to note that there are enough shorelines of the world that are currently on the cusp, if you will, between emerging and submerging that the future projections for sea level rise may cause a number of shorelines to go from formerly uh, emerging to, in the near future, submerging. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is that the coast is a very arbitrary thing. When you, we think about continents and oceans, we think the beach is the difference, but it's not. In, for a geologist, the edge of the continent is the continental shelf. That's where you go from thick crust to thin crust. And it just depends how much water is in the ocean right now. That is, whether some's saved in ice on, in glaciers or other things. It just depends on how much water there is in the ocean, how much it laps over the top of the continent. And this is especially true over very long periods of time. Uh, that is, periods of time longer than hundreds of years uh, into the uh, length of thousands of years or tens of thousands of years. Uh, over those kinds of geological uh, time periods of thousands of years to tens of thousands of years, the rise and fall of sea level is the most important factor in determining the location of a shoreline. Given current population trends in the United States, shoreline location is a significant issue. On the order of 80% of the U.S. population lives in coastal counties. And since World War II, there's been a national migration away from the interior of the United States out towards the coastlines. We have a, a national, indeed it's a global problem, with uh, uh, the development of our shorelines in a way that's not really compatible with coastal processes. This takes two forms. One is that we are building uh, expensive infrastructure, um, sewage delivery systems, highways, and we are also building our homes and cities uh, in the pathway of very high energy dangerous marine processes such as hurricanes, tsunamis, and those that are not quite so life-threatening such as erosion, passive coastal erosion that takes place, and of course future sea level rise.